I'm one of the co-founders at Brev, which is a tool that makes it really easy uh, to spin up dev environments, and uh, if you're using GPUs, they're a lot cheaper. As a co-founder, um, I find myself kind of split with a lot of different contexts. A lot of times I'm doing marketing, a lot of times I'm doing sales, and sometimes I'm doing dev, uh, like a lot of dev work. So what I really want is a tool that is essentially a web browser that can handle the context shifts that I have to make. I want something where I can say, hey, I'm gonna do dev work, and it closes everything and just spins up my dev tabs. I wanna say, hey, I'm doing marketing work, and it closes everything and just spins up my marketing tasks, and same for sales. So I pretty much wanna build Git Chrome for, uh, or Git branches for Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was gonna build a CLI to do this, and then we realized, hey, with ChatGPT, I think we can actually just build that using bash scripts. Um, so yeah, I wanna use it from a terminal. I wanna type uh, marketing, sales, dev. I wanna close everything and just open the tabs that I want to look at and not really have to think about the context. Um, yeah, so why bash? Well, there's a huge pro of bash, which is it's ubiquitous. Every laptop in here um, can run a bash script, so that'll make it really easy for us to write. Um, cons of bash? Fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Bash is uh, pretty rough to write if you're having to write it yourself. But, um, and that's not alone, I was on dev.2 and you know you see posts like this. So uh, something nice about ChatGPT is that as an interface to write Bash makes Bash writable. <laughs> so now we're gonna build it, um, and we're just gonna do that live. Woo! Yeah, so mm -hmm. pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. All right, so, the first thing I want to do is ask chat, can you guys see everything fine? Also, apologies ahead of time, I'm a light mode person. Light mode. <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, make a bash script that opens Google Chrome to, I'll start with just like Twitter and Mixpanel. Um, slash twitter.com, uh, oops, and Mixpanel. All right. Let's see what it does. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I guess uh, one thing I realized, we're gonna just have to like watch it type this to me, so apologies in advance for that. Um, but once we get the script, I'll go ahead and run it. And I think one thing I left out is we should make sure it works on Mac. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if the Google Chrome is gonna work. The context of ChatGPT has been really nice because um, what I've noticed for anything that's generative, uh, generative seems to work really well when, you're when it's more malleable and you're able to kind of say, hey, this isn't quite right. I'm still at the helm. It's not doing everything for me, but um, that conversational aspect of it makes, it makes it huge. So cool, we now have a script that I can run. Um, I'm going to make a bash script, call it browser.sh. I'm gonna paste this and see what happens. Oh, I'm gonna have to, I think, oh nice, it told me. This is great. <laughs> it told me that I have to make this thing executable. Oh, uh, I called it something else. Love live demos, right? Cool. Why did it fail? Unrecognized option, new tab. So let me look at this. Open Chrome, new tab. Um, they probably upgraded Chrome since then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if I tried? Um, just copy past it in GPT. Yeah. Let me just. Oh, just copy the error? Yeah. Here. I can also just try and take out the new tab. Or actually, let me see. I got an error. <laughs> when running this on Mac. I think you forgot sudo rmrf. <laughs> root, just root. Perfect. Sorry, man. There we go, this is perfect. Great recommendation. <laughs> cool. So now let's go ahead and paste this. and run that again. Did it actually open? Yay! It opened, Woo! cool. Um, so let me go ahead and close this. Um, 
Now that we have this open and they opened in the same window, I wanna make sure that it closes anything that's open. Because if I'm coming from different contexts, let's say I have my dev tabs open, I wanna open up my marketing tabs, I wanna close everything else. So um, make sure to close existing windows first, or the existing window first. And again, what's really nice about this is the iterative process. This is just like you're coding it yourself. If I was writing a bash script, I would try a thing, I would run a thing, it wouldn't work, I'd fix it and repeat. Uh, and it's great that it knows to do this in Mac. Uh, cool, so now let's repaste this and see what happens. Yes, I do want to control. Nice, okay, cool. So. This is great because it just opened up the, 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 the essentially the websites that I told it to, but I wanted to open up websites that are stored somewhere. That way I know I can open up marketing or dev or sales. So I'm gonna say um, read, uh, actually instead of opening Twitter and mix panel, open URLs that are located in a text file in the same directory. The file will have one URL per new line. <laughs> and this is uh, huge for me because I hate writing anything that's parsing in Bash. <laughs> <laughs> So this is gonna close the existing Google Chrome window. It's gonna read URLs from a script that's, uh, or sorry, from a text file. And then it's gonna open them. Oh, did it not know to also open them? <laughs> oh no, yeah, it did. Okay, cool, it's part of the while loop. Um, it writes better bash, better than, it writes bash better than I can read it. So, um, cool, no such file or directory. Um, definitely tell me if there's an error. Tell me if the, Eh, whatever, actually I won't deal with that. I don't have to get that nitpicky. Cool, so now let me make a um, urls.txt. Cool. And I wanna put here um, Twitter. And I wanna put mixed panel. It works, um, cool. So now we are able to read URLs from a file, it's opening up Chrome, and it's making sure to close the existing Chrome version first. Um, so now I want different files that are my different contexts. Uh, so I think a good way to do this is I want this script, when I run dot slash browser dot sh, to accept an argument, that argument is the name of the file, and I'll call it dev. So then I can say essentially open dev. Um, Accept an argument when running the script that is the name of the file to read from up until the dot text. Hmm. <laughs> Open those parentheses. <laughs> So um, if this works, I'll be able to, I should make a touch dev.txt, marketing.txt, and sales.txt. Um, what are sales tabs? Um, HubSpot, um, Twitter. Twitter's gonna be in every one. <laughs> um, no, not Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. You can see I have Copilot, but maybe I don't need it. <laughs> Um, so those are my sales tabs. For marketing, I think these are, oops, these are good for my marketing tabs. Just Twitter, mixed panel. Uh, I have customer IO, I use that as well. Oh, this is gonna be great tomorrow. <laughs> and then um, for dev, what do I use for dev? I guess uh, chat GPT. <laughs> so chat.openai.com. Um, and I think that's good. So how did this work? So now I can copy code. I'm gonna replace the script and browser dev. It worked. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's do uh, marketing. Oh, I shouldn't have closed it. 
I'm done. Okay, hold up. Okay, so I have dev. If I change context uh, to marketing, phenomenal. Uh, um, so one last thing I want to do is wrap this so that we're not running a script. So I want um, write a bash function that accepts an argument and calls the above script. Um, let's call this a dev browser. So we'll call it db. So name the function db. <coughs> this works, then we'll just be able to say DB dev, DB marketing, DB sales, uh, and whatever other contexts you might have. So. Does it also know how to save tabs too? Um, that's next. That's the next talk if you guys come next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I called this browser. So let's just pop this in here. DB dev. Hey! DB marketing, DB sales, it works. <laughs> what happens if you give it a random name? DB um, two random. Oh, I guess that was two. That was a problem. Okay. We could say modify the script so that if a random name is given, you create a text file with that name in the same directory. Hmm. Yeah. Add, add uh, error cases as we discover them. Hmm. So this will probably work. But yeah, so I've been actually using ChatGPT a lot for just making bash scripts. Um, I found that to be really easy, really simple ways for me to get kind of like a hacky script up and running. Um, I do this a lot where if I have like aggregate data in a CSV and I want to really fish for something, I'll just kind of tell it to do that for me. Um, <laughs> and it's been working really well. So um, very happy about that. Um, yeah, this looks like it's gonna do that. It'll create the file. Um, let's just test it real quick before I go back to these slides. Um, uh, DB random and random.txt was created. Nice, good suggestion. <laughs> so I think uh, a thing with generative AI is it needs to be funny when wrong and scary when right. And that's kind of what I think you see with the chat uh, GPT model, and I think why it's kind of taken the world by storm is it isn't necessarily like replacing us, it's enabling me to do a thing that I really didn't want to do, write the mundane, very verbose, kind of like gross uh, bash <laughs> scripts, but which are ubiquitous and really powerful and can do anything. You can open Chrome and write and write and read from files and all of that. So um, I really do think generative AI works best when it's kind of uh, making you more of a creative director of the things that you're trying to accomplish. Um, so yeah, this has been huge uh, for me. I've been really excited about it, and uh, so to see where the space goes. How much would you pay for it? Um, I'm paying ten bucks for Copilot per month, so I'll at least pay ten bucks because I think I'm going to turn from Copilot in favor of ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs>